turn on statistics. So it gives you the minimum, the maximum, the last vet measured value, and also how many weight measurements we've made. This, this table gives you the ranges. So this is the minimum, uh, max, this is the last value. So this is the minimum and, and maximum of every one of these measurements. But you see, look, the average or the mean is 191 microseconds, I believe. Look at the, right below it, the minimum is 167. So with LaCroix, if you're looking at your circuit and you want to quickly have a scope tell you whether everything's working correctly, you could look at your statistics and say, I'm happy with every one of these widths. But then when you look at your minimum, you go, uh-oh. So, but LaCroix versus all other competitors in this area, uh, we measure every one. They only measure the first one that occurs. Or they might mark it. See how it says C2? That's the ground reference. We've acquired the, a, a waveform from channel 2. We have a, 10 million data points on it. <laughs> right. We have a zoom. See this area here? That is expanded in the zoom window. And the things in red are not bad. They're just showing you where we're making specific measurements. That would be my question. The, next, the measurement that we're measuring, you can tell, is width. And that's up here, pulse width. If you wanted a rise time, that red would shrink to just the rise or fall. Now, look at this. Do you know how many widths? Remember I told you we measure every one of them? Right. I showed you a table that gave you the min and the max. Right. The question was asked, can you see where it is, yeah. the, the, the smallest one? Right. The answer is yes. Look, here is the first raw, uh, pulse width. And if I touch it, it's the zoom right there. And it's 165.80625 microseconds. <laughs> Here's the tenth one right there, 166.7 microseconds. And that's it right here. And then when you can look and look at the values all the way down, and you have 52 of them. But look, right in here, nanoseconds, 167. That rears its ugly head, and even one, and even one down here. So if we touch this one, we should see it. Well, it's so small, nano versus micro. We've got to actually change the uh, the, the the time base. There it is. It's there, and you see where it is? It's right in the middle of the data. And then if we point down here, look, at the very end. There it is. It's, it's, you see that little slice right yeah. there? That's it. And if you want to document this, I'm going to go up here and create a lab notebook. Okay. And what I'm going to do is create a report that says, hey, I've got a problem here. And I want to capture the image. And I want to make some notes on it. Right? And then save it and send it to the boss or the customer or the whoever. So what we do is, did I hit it? Did it create a lab? Nope. Oh, here we go. So we'll enter a unique name of the report before we create the report and, you know, down to the second. Okay. For the so you can change that. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just actually just type in here and say, you know, here's the unique name. And you hit, okay, that's the name of the report. And then you say, hey, I want to document why I was do why I reported this or what my test was. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working on this part for these reasons and geez, I was having a problem and you know, and this is what was the problem was whatever, right? You got the idea. Now you save the report. See down here it says save in the report. Done. Here's the report. Let's go ahead and annotate it to prepare it before we save it for you know, we want, we can draw things, we can, oh yeah, there it is, we can say, there it is, <laughs> right there. We can say, uh, let's go ahead and right here say, you know, not good. Where's my exclamation point? Okay. Not good. Okay. So there's the little label for it. Not good. Now let's save this. 
We'll move this over, say done. Okay, so now it's got it. To go back and look at it, lab notebook, we're going to now, this is the one that we named it, mm -hmm. and we're going to, we can, we can save these, by the way, in HTML, rich text or PDF format, so you can send them out to someone. And you say, all right, now let's go ahead and view it. It's showing the report. It's calling up this particular report. Because customers want to do this. They want to document and, right. and show things. So here it is. Yeah. This is the, the bitmap of their company's logo. In this okay. case, it's LaCroix. Here's the name of the report. Here's all the details of why you're doing. And with the annotation, not including good. not good. <laughs> and how the scope was actually captured, yeah, and what the setup of the scope was. And down here, a little thing called flashback. So if you had... Go back to that? If you had a device under test that you were working on, and it's in the lab, and uh, you sent that product, once you did your testing, you sent it off to another group or something to analyze, and you go, oh, I forgot to make a measurement. I forgot to do a fast Fourier transform on that to see what the frequency characteristics are. I'm, oh man, it's going to be another two weeks before I get it back. No problem. You just touch flashback and it recalls the entire waveforms that made up this report. It recalls the panel setup. So now you can continue on just where you left off when you made the report. And then you can go in and say, oh gee, I want to go do a FFT on that channel. There it is. There's your FFT. Well, you so you just that? continue on. Oh, as many as you want. It's a hard drive, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have a thumb drive. So you could put it on memory sticks. So you can store hundreds, thousands. But anyway, you're storing the report. You're storing the panel setup. You're storing uh, the data. All four channels in with the report. Now you can continue on doing testing even though you don't have your device under test. 